So today I'll teach you all about how stats work in Steel Rising as well as uh, how they affect your weapon's damage and what the weapon affinities are as well as what the clothes do in this game. But if you've played Bloodborne before, all of this will be extremely familiar to you because it's pretty much exactly the same, except some of the stats names do change. So first I just want to say or to point out that the max level in this game right now is level 100. There is no new game plus and a level cap for all of the attributes is 20. So I'm thinking around 10 to 12 is probably the soft cap for uh, all of these stats. So durability increases your health and your balance. Health is pretty obvious, you know, the more health you have, the more damage you can take without dying. And balance here is literally the poise of this game. So the more balance you have, the more you can poise through hits when you're charging heavy attacks, you will not get staggered out of it. So basically there's less chances you're going to get knocked down. Now the vigor in this game is different. As you can see in the stats below, it increases your endurance, so your stamina. So obviously the more stamina you have, the more you can continue hitting enemies, dodging, uh, blocking hit and all of that good stuff. Now it also increases your critical hit multiplier. That's what happens when uh, enemies are stance broken. It is, in this game it's called immobilized and when you hit them you will actually see that status bar go up as you hit them and once they're immobilized you can perform a critical hit on them. So the higher vigor is the more damage you will do uh, when doing the critical hit on enemies. Engineering is pretty interesting. It kind of works like luck in a Dark Souls and Arcane in Elden Ring. So it will increase the loot you get from enemies, but it will also increase a few other things. It will increase your armor, so how much damage is negated when you get hit, and it will increase your affliction multiplier. Now afflictions in this game are basically status effects, right? So they're uh, flame damage, frost damage, and fulmination damage. So once those are applied to enemies, the damage you do over time, so it's all dot damage, it will basically increase that damage exactly. So it doesn't really increase the rate at which the status effect is applied, it just makes it do more damage once it's applied. Elemental alchemy has a hidden stat, uh, what it does. Now, if you go in your defenses, you'll see that it increases your flame, your frost, and your fulmination resistances uh, with a percentage. So once enemies hit you with those three types of damages, it will take longer for that uh, type of damage to take effect on you. But the interesting thing is that it actually will increase the damage you do with weapons that have the uh, alchemy affinity. So I'll show you an example if I go in my weapons here. I have frosted fans. And as you can see uh, in the damage section here under uh, characteristics, uh, you see power affinity, agility, and alchemy affinity. And you have letters here. So it's exactly like in all of the other Souls games. The higher the letter, the more damage output you will get by putting points in those specific attributes. So for the frosted fans, you would want to put points in agility and alchemy. Or a better example is actually the musket. As you can see, the musket has alchemy affinity of A. So it will do so much damage if you um, put points in alchemy. Now the only downside to using alchemy weapons or weapons with alchemy affinity is that it takes uh, alchemical capsules, which is something you get from defeating enemies or you, you can also buy them at the shop with the um, quote unquote souls that you get, right? So it can run down pretty fast, which is a bit unfortunate. One of those times where I actually wish there was a crafting system, but it's actually pretty good if you have, you know, one weapon that uses alchemy and the other that doesn't, which is why it's important to always have uh, two primary stats when you're making a build in these types of games. Let's go back to attributes. So now that we covered alchemy, let's go to agility. Now agility is basically the dexterity of this game. So this will increase the damage you do with dex- with- uh, sorry- <laughs> with agility affinity weapons. So like the uh, armored fans that I have, have the agility affinity at B, right? So it will increase the physical damage you do, obviously, because I have that weapon equipped. It will also increase the immobilization you do to enemies. And if you remember, immobilization is the stance breaking, right? So the higher that is, the quicker you'll immobilize enemies and be able to perform a critical hit on them. So I just want to quickly go back here to the vigor where it increases your critical hit multiplier. So a build like this, you know, vigor, agility, uh, and alchemy can be really, really good. And now the last stat is power. So this is really for the people who want to use heavy weapons. So this will increase 
at the damage you do with weapons that have the power affinity, like the, um, the big hammer you can start the game with, right? But it also increases your impact, how many hits it will take for you to actually throw enemies down. It's different from balance, you know, balance is just your poise, but the impact is really just about throwing the enemy down or knocking them off their feet, basically with your hit. So if you want to make a power builder or you want to use, you know, a power weapon, you're going to want to use power, durability, and probably some vigor. Uh, in your build. So all these three here. So I hope that made sense. I really wanted to just Give you an overview of what these stats do so you can make builds easier in this game because there is a no respec Which is pretty unfortunate, but you know, maybe we will get that later now I want to touch on something that uh, has to do with the stats a bit So, you know when you run out of stamina and you can use an alchemical capsule to replenish your stamina uh, I'll do it right here you can see I get frost damage from using it. Now, if I do it a couple times in a row, I can actually get frozen. You can see now my character's frozen. And I have to, like, you know, keep hitting the, um, the light button to break out of that frozen state. And that's where the resistances to frost will really help. So the higher your resistance is, the more time it will take for your character to actually freeze if you use that mechanic. But there's also another way, apart from attributes, that you can increase your resistances to stuff, which is with the armor you put on. So if we go in equipment and we go in my jackets, you can see that every armor has its uh, damage negation. So a 50 damage negation. It has a balance stat and a resistance stat. All of them will have that and some of them will actually give you more attribute points. Like you see this one that actually gives you plus 8 on your endurance. It also gives you a higher flame resistance of 4%. So these work exactly like in Bloodborne where every um, armor set actually has their own resistances and their own attributes they can give you. But that's another way you can increase your uh, attributes and you can increase your resistances and defenses towards status effects and uh, damage as well. So because when you get hit in this game, you don't see the damage values or how much damage you take uh, number-wise, it's kind of hard to calculate the damage negation and how much damage the armor negates exactly. So unfortunately, I cannot touch on that, but um, I think everything that I talked about will definitely get you started on being able to understand the game and make really strong builds. So I hope this video was helpful. If you have any other tips, uh, put them down in the comments below for other people to see. And other than that, everyone, have yourself a wonderful day, and I'll see you all very soon.